This video is sponsored by Hero Forge Custom Miniatures. So you're running a D&D game next weekend and you've invited a couple of people who are completely new to tabletop RPGs. Should you provide pre-generated characters for them so you can jump right into gaming? Or would that be depriving them of character creation, a valuable part of the game? Let's talk. Hi everyone, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20. Now the question I mentioned about whether to provide pre-gens or go with character creation is one that's answer depends on a lot of different factors. I think the biggest ones are probably, is it a campaign or a one-shot? And who are these people and how into this might they be? We'll be considering those factors in a little more detail as we go throughout the video, but the point is there is no one size fits all solution. And in this video, I really just wanna lay out the pros and the cons of character creation for new players so that you DMs can make the best decision for your group in your situation. Make sure you also stay tuned to the end of the video where I will talk about some common mistakes you should avoid when doing character creation with new players. So before we get into my points for character creation and for pre-generated characters, I just wanna say that the answer might be really obvious if these players are telling you, yes, I want to create a character. If they say that and they understand it's going to take some time and effort, then by all means support them and help them make it happen. But in my experience, most new players that I'm inviting to my table probably don't know enough about the game or the character creation process to really make an informed decision. And they're just kind of in the whatever you think, Nate, position. So now let's consider our points for character creation. And our first point in favor of character creation is that you can learn some of the rules of the game along the way as you create a character. Character creation can be a great way to come in contact with little rules, tidbits, and some of the basic foundations of the game without being overwhelmed, ideally. Now, this is mainly true if you have experienced players guiding new players in character creation, and then they're able to explain little bits and pieces of the rules along the way. Now, it's also true if a new player is actually just reading through the player's handbook as they create their character, they're gonna learn some rules along the way, but that's not actually the method I would recommend for most new players. The fifth edition player's handbook is actually not very newcomer friendly in my opinion for character creation. But when you have that experienced player sitting alongside the new player, when you get to ability scores and choosing what numbers go where, you can explain a little bit about what those ability scores mean. The same is true of skill proficiencies, and when you get to your class and race, there are lots of opportunities for little rules tidbits to come up, such as dwarves getting advantage on saving throws against poison, for example. You have an opportunity to talk about the concepts of rolling with advantage and disadvantage. When you're recording information about the rogue's cunning action, this is a great opportunity for an experienced player to explain what the disengage, dash, and hide actions are. However, I will caution you that as you're explaining these little rules tidbits along the way, I don't think it's a good idea to explain every single rule that comes up in character creation, rather just to see little bits here and there and being sensitive to how overwhelmed that new player might be feeling based on their body language and the way they're acting in response to your rules explanations. Before the next point, a quick word from our sponsor, Hero Forge. Hero Forge offers fully customizable tabletop miniatures with dozens of fantasy species and thousands of parts to choose from. They're adding new stuff every week and you can really get creative with their tools. In addition to 3D printed miniatures you can order and have shipped to you or print on your own 3D printer, you can also use their tools to make character portraits and tokens for your characters. Whether you're a DM or a player, Hero Forge is an incredible tool to more fully realize the characters we create. Check it out now at HeroForge.com. Now back to the video. In addition to learning little bits of the rules in the process of character creation, new players also can benefit from character creation as they might be more invested in their character if they actually created it. If they actually got some voice in choosing class and race and some of the features and spells and things like that, they might be more excited to actually play that character. Now, they can still get excited about playing a pre-generated character, but especially if you're playing a campaign, I might recommend character creation because if you're gonna be spending campaign amounts of time with this character, 
You're gonna want it to be something you actually want to play, not just something that was handed to you. Now there is a little bit of a middle ground there actually. You don't have to just have a random pre-generated character handed to you or created all from scratch yourself. One option that's pretty decent is just asking that new player what race and class they might want to play after you explain them briefly and then just going out and finding a pre-generated character or going on D&D Beyond and doing the quick build option to select that race and class and then you can give that character sheet to the player. Our last point in favor of character creation for new players is that it can be really fun. Character creation for a lot of us is just a fun process. Now I've got a lot of RPG books on the shelf back there and there are some back there that I haven't ever even played and maybe I never will. But I'm kind of a collector, A, and B, I actually really like getting a feel for these games just by creating characters for them. Sometimes when I get a new RPG book, that's the first thing I do. I sit down and I create a character. In fact, when I got Easy D6, I took aside my 10 year old son and I asked him, hey, do you wanna make a character with me? And I showed him the book and he got into the pictures and things like that. And we decided, yeah, let's roll up some characters. And we did that and it was a really fun process. As I create characters, I enjoy learning little bits of the rules. I enjoy getting in contact with the lore of this world a little bit and thinking about what races or types of people live here. And you actually get to engage in some storytelling as you imagine a backstory for your character. It's just a fun process. Now, I will say that character creation in a game like this is a lot more simple than D&D 5th edition. And so that's something to consider too as we get into the cons that character creation in D&D 5th edition, while not the most complex, is more complex than a lot of games. So our first point then in favor of just going with pre-generated characters is that character creation can be overwhelming. It can be really intimidating for a new player. And this is where you really need to consider what type of person am I dealing with here? I think there's two major things to consider. A, how excited is this person about playing D&D? Is this something that they've been dreaming of doing for a long time and they're totally gung-ho and really want to get into it? If so, then I think they're more likely to enjoy character creation. And B, what is this person's experience with pretty complex games and how much do they enjoy them? Is this a person who's never played something more complicated than Monopoly? Or is this someone who actually and really enjoys Warhammer and complicated computer games and board games with 50 page instruction manuals and things like that. If there's someone who has experience with that kind of complexity and seems to enjoy it, then they're more likely to enjoy the process of character creation. But anyway, getting back to the intimidation factor, there's a lot of flipping around in this book and the process of character creation, going back and forth between sections. There's a lot of decision making needed without much context. And if you really dig in and try to find the context, pretty soon you're spending two hours just trying to create a character. Overall, while you can learn some of the rules along the way, I think it does sometimes give you a bit of an awkward cross section of the rules. Our second point in favor of pre-generated characters is that character creation can be very time consuming. It's a really big investment, especially for someone who isn't sure if they're gonna be into this game at all. And that's where I definitely think it's worth asking, is this a one shot or is this a campaign? And by the way, if it's someone who isn't sure if D&D is going to be their thing, maybe you've invited them and they say, yeah, sure, I'm willing to give that a try. They're not totally gung-ho seeming really really into it, then I would say it probably should be a one shot. You should probably just ask them, hey, do you want to come play D&D sometime? Provide them with a pre-generated character. And then if they enjoy it, you can invite them to extend that into a campaign. At that point, you could always say, hey, you played with a pre-generated character last time. Do you want to try to roll up your own this time? So if it's someone who isn't really sure about D&D and it's going to be for a one shot, I would say a pre-generated character is probably your best option. Also, in case you've never tried it before, if you are a single DM with experience and you're playing with three or four completely new players, the idea that you can create characters together at the table in an hour or less is Mm, no, that's not gonna happen. If you're just one-on-one -on -one with a new player, sure, I think that's possible, but yeah, it can be really time consuming when you're dealing with a lot of new players. And that brings us to our last point in favor of pre-generated characters. Some people just want to play. If you wanna jump in and try playing the game, which is in my opinion, the best way to learn the game, I think pre-generated characters are going to be your best bet. So hopefully with those points in favor of character creation and in favor of pre-generated characters, you've got some good things to think about that can help you make your decision. But if you do, 
do decide to go ahead with character creation, I want to cover some mistakes you'll definitely want to avoid. The first one is just dumping this process on new players and saying, here, create a character. Here's the player's handbook. Everything you need is in here. Go. There are certainly some people who can handle that and who might actually enjoy that process. But as I said before, I don't think it's laid out in a super user-friendly way here for newcomers. And I think it's going to just be absolutely overwhelming. If you decide to go ahead with character creation for your new players, I highly recommend you guide them in that process, whether that's sitting right with them or giving them some advice and resources like perhaps some of my character creation videos. I've got one that's gonna be good for non-spellcasting classes, and then I've got another one that's gonna be good for spellcasting classes. The second mistake you'll definitely want to avoid is surprising your new characters with character creation on game night. You've invited them over to a game and you say, hey, we're gonna play some D&D, &D, and then in reality, you spend the first hour, hour and a half just creating characters. If that's your plan, I think you'll definitely wanna give them a heads up so they know what to expect and aren't completely overwhelmed thinking they were coming to a game night and really just creating characters for most of that time. That is a great thing to do in like a session zero of a campaign, but for a one shot, once again, I would say probably just jump into playing. And my last mistake to avoid with character creation for new players is plowing ahead with the process while ignoring new evidence that's coming forward that might lead you to abandon that process or to alter your path. You might think this one or two new players can handle the process and you're excited about it, but if you notice that they are feeling overwhelmed or they're bored and they're asking, when are we gonna play and things like that, be willing to alter your plans a little bit. And there are a couple ways I think you can do that. One is if you've got enough of a foundation on your character sheet, you don't have to have every little thing complete. You can always just start playing with half a character sheet filled out and kind of figure it out as you go and say, I will finish up the other details next time. And another great option is just to have some backup pre-generated characters handy just in case or have some online at your fingertips that you can quickly print out. So those are my thoughts on whether or not new players should create characters, but I would love to hear your thoughts, your questions as well down in the comments below. And before we go, I do wanna thank the WASD20 patrons for their support of the channel. Patrons get some pretty cool rewards, things like weekly live map drawing streams and other behind the scenes videos. So check it all out over at patreon.com slash WASD20. Thank you so much, patrons. All right, that's gonna do it for this one, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care. You'll see me again very soon.